so I am starting this video pretty much as soon as I have woken up. It is just gone 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning and I thought, do you know what would be a fun way to spend the lockdown when I have nothing but time on my hands to watch one of my all time favourite series and a series that I know is popular with you guys as well. I thought, do you know what? I'm going to have a Harry Potter marathon and I'm going to film it and honestly this literally takes up an entire day, almost a full 24 hours. So I have some Harry Potter themed snacks planned, I have Harry Potter drinks planned, I have the books here. Trust me, I was the biggest Harry Potter fan back in the day. When I say it like dedicated and ruled my life for a good couple of years, I mean I was like a fan account, I was obsessed with it, like I've been to the studio tour so many times, I've read each individual book seven times, that's a lot of reading because there's a lot of writing in those books. It felt only fitting that I would do a Harry Potter themed challenge on my YouTube channel. I can't believe it's taken me this long actually. So we're obviously going to start with the Philosopher's Stone. I think the hardest part about a Harry Potter marathon is getting bored halfway through. Not because the series is boring, just because it is not natural to sit and watch like 19 hours of movies back to back. I have done this once before with my friend Rachel. We were absolute troopers and managed to get through all eight films when we were about 13. That was voluntary. This time I'm very limited for options as to what I can do in the house that I haven't already done and this is one of them. So we're going to crack on with Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I am in my my pajamas but I do feel as though they look a little bit Hogwarts-esque and I'm going to show you my setup first. This is the table on this side. We have the books, we have a dark red candle deliberately for Gryffindor, we've got a little golden snitch, we've got the chess piece from the Philosopher's Stone, we have Harry's wand, we have Harry's glasses, I've got red Gryffindor nails and then we have the box set of films. This actually only goes up to seven part one because the Deathly Hallows part two wasn't out when I got that. We then have Harry Potter seen it, we have a Harry Potter chocolate sourcing hat and I've actually just realized that I've missed something off we have a packet of jelly snakes so there's a little bit of everything going on here and there are more snacks to be made and also to come throughout the day and then down here we have a little Hogwarts-esque shrine so we have one of the original Wizarding World paintings I think there's only like a hundred of these made in the UK or something like that and then there's a sign that says I'd rather be at Hogwarts and then of course we've got the magical flickering candles as if we we're in the Great Hall so we're gonna get the first one on the telly and let's get going. I've set up the sofa. This is gonna be my position for the next however long. Just kidding, I'm really thinking that at some point during the day my family are gonna wanna watch the telly, so I'm gonna have to go up to my bedroom and watch them by myself because I can't hold the telly for a full 24 hours. Let's go! I genuinely think that this film might be one of the most magical films that has ever been made. I don't usually reach for it because it's it's a long film, but it is just, oh, like, look at this. The later films start off so dark. This is just so uplifting and magical. <gasps> Here we go, boys. We're in for a long ride. This is the scene. This is the, the intro. A little bit of magic, that is. This scene really makes me want to go to Universal Orlando. <laughs> My mum just shouted from the kitchen, don't say that. But it's because you can do the train ride, obviously, between the two parks. Oh, look who it is. He's Ron. There is snakes. Now seems like a good time to crack open the jelly snakes because they're eating all their sweets on the Hogwarts Express. Yes, I have just woken up. Oh, enter Hermione. This is my part. Has anyone seen a toad? A boy named Neville's lost one. Oh, are you doing magic? Let's see then. Um, You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. <laughs> Move over, Emma Watson. I think I've got the part. Look at how sick this mug is. I've just got a coffee in this and it changes colour as the mug heats up. So on one side it obviously has like, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. And then once the heat rises, it says like, you know, the Marauders map info. This is so cool. Mum, where is this mug from? Yeah, it was a Christmas present ages ago. I want to say they used to sell them in Primark. Oh yeah, it might be Debenhams, a little Debenhams number. What flavour coffee is this? Uh, Cinder Toffee. Cinder Toffee 
coffee cinder toffee coffee love it it's a beanies flavored coffee i haven't had this one yet but it's actually pretty darn good i'm not gonna lie i really like it so we've got to the end of the first film, which means that it's time to start the Chamber of Secrets and this time I'm joined with Harry. Hello. How excited are you to be involved in a Harry Potter marathon? You know, I've always actually wanted to do one. Yeah, to be fair. Never got round to it. Quarantine's the perfect time. We are now about to put on the Chamber of Secrets, which actually is my least favorite Harry Potter film. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if it's just because it's the longest and it seems to drag on forever. I think with the first two, they really tried to stick to the book. Whereas after that, it just kind of became a bit more like creative. They missed a lot of the book out. So the second one is super long. So we're not gonna faff around talking about it. We're gonna get it on. I have got changed into clothes, basically just different pajamas. <laughs> Right, we are about to start the second film. We were just taking a thumbnail. So let's get going. Let's start with the Chamber of Secrets. Can I have some of the sorting hat for that? Yes, yeah, sure, we have some snacks. I also have this Harry Potter themed sorting hat snack, which is, as you can see, very much half eaten, but it did look like a chocolate sorting hat, so we're going to continue to eat this whilst we watch the Chamber of Secrets. Also, guys, I have Pygmy Puff Slippers from the studio tour. These are actually elite, I'm not going to lie. How hard is it really to just sit quietly in your bedroom? When there's a jump about elf, probably <laughs> quite hard. Do you feel like we're on goggle box? Yeah, I wish I was on goggle box. I'm me too. I'd be a little like. Goggle box? Harry and I would be hilarious if you want to hit us up. That's such a good idea. Mm -hmm. Who's your favourite Harry Potter character? Neville. Neville? Neville. That's such a random choice. No, I used to go. Is it because he's from Yorkshire? No. Is that why you called him Hamster Neville? Oh my god, yeah! Harry had a hamster called Neville. Yes. That's every reason. Really? Yes. To be fair, mine was called Snitch. It's not true, so I swear. I never touch Mrs. Norton. Which is your favourite Harry Potter film, Lottie? No, I don't think that's for you. Hi. Right, <laughs> I'm in the kitchen. Here's Dad. And I am taking a tiny break. Chamber of Secrets is still on in there to make some lunch. Now we have a. <laughs> you can hear my mum and them slipping. I'm making for my lunch a decorate your own pizza. And I thought I would make it Harry Potter themed. So I'm gonna design a Harry Potter pizza. Um, right. Well, this didn't really turn out quite how I imagined this was meant to be a lightning bolt. Oh, what is this? One sec. Maybe get back to me marginally better but not a lot <laughs> okay so it's finished cooking a good question is where has the lightning bolt gone um but never mind we're just gonna eat it whilst we continue to watch the chamber of secrets the longest film in the world really that's a bold you statement mum just said she'd rather have oven pizza than a domino's no you make no. me sick do you want some Harry? no i don't want some for the seventh oh, time oh. Mm. i'm just a bit getting an indian for tea and that marks the end of the second film. Woo! Here we go, we're on to the third one and we have a new collection of snacks that I'm just about to show you. Everybody has left me, I'm left watching this one alone once again. So, I thought we would do a little Harry Potter snack haul because the sorting hat, chocolate that is very nearly finished, is from M&S and they actually have a Harry Potter collection right now. Perfect for Christmas gifts if you know a Harry Potter fan that might want some like Harry Potter themed chocolate. So, I also now have a chocolate elder wand which is called Dumbledore's elder wand and it comes with sherbet lemons if you're a Harry Potter fan I'm sure you will get that. I then also have a golden snitch in the shape of a chocolate orange. That is the only thing I can describe this as similar to. I then have, I'm actually not sure what these are, solid chocolate balls in a Gryffindor tin. A bit strange. Of course, a chocolate frog. You can't have Harry Potter without a chocolate frog. This is like aero kind of chocolate inside. And then last but not least, oh, was that everything? That was everything, yeah. So there was four things. This and the golden snitch being the main ones. I do just think they are cute like stocking fillers. So obviously we are only on the third film. It's starting to get dark. We're gonna be up all night pretty much, but we've got snacks to keep us going. So we're gonna be okay. We are still currently on the Prisoner of Azkaban. They're just having their divination lesson with Professor Trelawney. Of course, the main question throughout this video that I want you to comment the answer to down below is which is your favorite Harry Potter movie and why? I struggle to choose, but I think the last two are my my favorite possibly two of my favorite films of all time actually we're still only halfway through the third film and it's getting dark but we vibe ready can you quote it it was that friend it was that friend do your best version of that it was that friend 
I feel like as a film, Prisoner of Azkaban is the nicest to watch in terms of like how it's shot. Fun fact, because I'm a bit sad and I know a lot about the actual making of the films, it's the only one with like a unique director. All of the other directors direct multiple Harry Potter films. So like, I think Chris Columbus directs the first two and then David Yates directs them onwards from four. But the third one has like a standalone director. I can't remember his name. I think it's probably my favorite to visually watch, if that makes sense. One of the best scenes in the whole series. You ready for this? Three, two, one, go on. Okay, we are coming towards the end of the third film and I thought that I would make my own butter beer. So I've had this a few times, once at the studio tour and I think maybe twice in Orlando, Florida. Every time I have not liked it. I've drank it because it's like authentic and I wanted to try it and the pictures are cute but I actually really don't like it. I usually pass it straight to my boyfriend Tom who really likes butter beer. However, I found a really easy recipe online where you essentially just mix cream soda with caramel flavoring so i got this and then of course they're usually topped with a fat amount of whipped cream now they didn't have any whipped cream in the supermarket so i got vegan whipped cream which actually is probably better anyway so essentially i think you just mix them together and then you have caramel flavored cream soda with cream on the top so let's go oh hell let's do this oh hell no oh hell Obviously you want to leave room for the whipped cream and then I'm not too sure how much caramel extract you need If I could even open it, it would be amazing There we go. I'm gonna just put in like maybe two spoonfuls or is that gonna be a lot? Whoa, wow, I feel like I'm doing a science experiment. Yeah, I reckon that's enough and then give it a give it a mix That looks about right. That looks so similar to the one that you get in the studio tour. Why won't this come out? Ugh. Ah that looks pretty good. Come on guys, am I a butterbeer expert or am I a butterbeer expert? There's your simple easy recipe if you want to create it at home. I do think there are like a couple of different things you could add in like different spices and stuff but overall that does not look too dissimilar to the real one. I'll put a picture here. It tastes so the same. I don't like it <laughs> but it looks cool. They've just had their pumpkin juices in the three broomsticks in the bit that I'm up to in Prisoner of Azkaban. Chin chin, you could definitely add a shot of alcohol to it as well if you wanted to watch it with an alcoholic bev. I mean, I don't really think it would make it taste any worse than it already tastes. Cheers to that. Mum's reaction, she also doesn't like the original butter beer. Doesn't it taste similar though? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the end of the third one. We're done. For some reason, we've been watching them all through Sky Cinema, but the fourth film won't play off Sky Cinema. So we also have Amazon Prime and the Harry Potter films are on Amazon Prime. So we're trying to switch to Prime instead. Fun and flash. And so we begin the fourth one. I feel like from here on out, they just get a lot darker. Cedric Diggory has just put his name in the Goblet of Fire. Oh, it keeps doing this. It's so annoying. It's buffering and I don't know why it's buffering. But what I was going to say was, are you a Cedric Diggory and Harry Potter kind of person? Or are you a Cedric Diggory in Twilight? Think about your answer carefully. So in a fitting turn for the fourth film, inside this little tin, oh, we've got Fred and George. Oh, it's lagged out again. What a shocker. Little tiny golden eggs, which is obviously one of the clues uh, in the Triwizard Tournament. So I thought we'll have one of these now, this cute little... 10. Right, because the TV is just not playing ball with this film, I'm now going to watch it on my laptop. I have attached a DVD player to it here because MacBooks are just not very compatible for DVD watching. Bit of a miss, but we vibe. So earlier on we spoke about getting a takeaway and I said we were thinking about getting an Indian. We've got an Indian and it has just arrived and I'm so excited because we actually haven't had this since the start of lockdown. Have we? Yeah, your birthday. So it's curry time. This reminds me of the scene in Gavin and Stacey every single time we get an Indian. Oh, Chicken boner, lamb boner, prawn boner, mushroom rice, bag of chips, kima and nine poppadoms. But yeah, we're still on the goblet of fire. Yay. Look at that bad boy. This is my ideal Sunday evening, I'm not gonna lie. We're up to the bit where they're picking dates for the Yule Ball. And I've got my curry to enjoy now too. Look who's about to make his return. Guess who's back, back, back. The seniors are scary so much. Murder attempt number one. And here we go boys, that's the end of the fourth movie. Oh my God, it seems to be going on forever. Okay, we're upstairs. I've hogged the TV downstairs all day and my parents want to watch Strictly's on, I'm a Celebs on, there's a few things on telly and I was like, do you know what? Fair enough, I have taken up the sofa the whole day. So we've come to my bedroom where we continue by starting the Order of the Phoenix. We're on to number five. The time is 7.45. So we've been at this since half past nine, just before half past nine. 
half 10, half 11, half 12, half 1. Wow! Over 10 hours, I've been watching all the Harry Potter films. There is about 8 and a bit to go. So it's going to be a really long night. It's going to basically be an all-nighter, so that's fun. But it's locked down, so it doesn't really matter, because what am I getting up for? Here it is. I feel like this is a really in-between film. You either love it or you're just not interested in it, because I feel like it's a kind of a filler for what's to come. Like, you need to watch this and read this book to know, to set yourself up for the ending. But it's not got that much action in it. I feel like the cast look a lot older in this one. I don't know how big the time jump is. I think it's only actually a year. They've all had haircuts since the Goblet of Fire. It's the silver vest for me. I literally could quote all of these films, not even lying. I always think that the shots of London in this sequence are so impressive. Like it always just makes me want to go to London every time I watch this bit of this movie. Or up to this bit. And the worst character in the series is Umbridge. And just like that, boys, we're at the end of the next one. So we're on to the Half-Blood Prince. The time is 21.49. So I'm reckoning that the Half-Blood Prince is quite a long film, but I'm thinking it should be done before midnight or like around about midnight. It's going to be such a late night. It's going to be like three. No, but it's going to be like 4 a.m. <laughs> Next one boys, Half Blood Prince is one of my favourites. I just think the storyline in this is like really, really nice. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's just almost like a teenage romantic film as well as like a, you know, fantasy film because the storyline between Hermione and Ron in this one is really nice. We're on to number six. I cannot believe how long I've been looking at a screen today. <sighs> I actually completely forgot how much I love this film. So fun fact, the Half Blood Prince was the first Ever Harry Potter film I saw when it came out I think I was nine or ten about nine or ten when the Half of Prince came out and um, I watched it as a standalone film I'd never seen any of the previous five I'd never read any of the books and I was so confused and I actually remember thinking I don't like this series I don't get the hype because which idiot jumps in at the sixth film but now I absolutely love it. It's so, so cleverly put together. And yeah, beautifully shot as well. The opening scenes with the Death Eaters in um, in London is just so good. No doubt no, his older brother Sirius died a few weeks ago. I told the whole black family here. Sirius' death is the saddest part of the Order of the Phoenix. In fact, comment below, who's your saddest Harry Potter death? I think mine is probably Dobby. Could be George, could be Dumbledore, could be Snape. Okay, now that it is bedtime, Harry and I have come back down to use the living room because my mum and dad have gone to bed now so we can just put the TV back on. I am fast forwarding it because I watched an hour on my laptop whilst everybody was downstairs and then when the TV became free, I thought we'd put it back on here but obviously I've already watched an hour so I need to like catch it up. Harry's also revising for his PE A-level test which he has tomorrow. Fun and fresh. Harry has here one of the chocolate frogs that um, we picked up from M&S. So we haven't opened this yet. There's also a chocolate wand, a chocolate elder wand we haven't opened. Here you go, this is what it looks like. It doesn't look quite the same as the one in the film, but it's close enough. And I think when you bite into it as well, it's like aero bubbles. Oh, is it nice? Oh, no. We're midway through the Half-Blood Prince and I've opened the Snitch, which is the best piece of food that I've opened all day. This is from M&S as well. I already said that I think these are like great stocking fillers for Christmas, but this is just the best one. It's shaped like a chocolate orange. It has wings. It's like wrapped up inside the box like this. And then when I opened it, it was like, so yeah, very excited about this. Don't know if it's just a solid lump of chocolate though in the middle. Yeah, so it's chocolate has been consumed. Potentially one of the worst scenes in the entire series. The worst on-screen kiss you've ever seen. Three, two, one. <coughs> no, thank you. This scene where Harry's like drunk on Polyjuice Potion is probably one of the funniest. Oh, Snake. And for a brief moment, Harry thinks he's come to save the situation, but he hasn't. Oh, hell no. Harry's little face. He wasn't expecting that. Mm. That's Dumbledore gone. The end of the sixth one. Two more to go and the time is... You can't even see it, but it's quarter past midnight. Lads, it's the penultimate one. We'll continue to defend your liberty and repel the forces that seek to take it from you. Remain. Remain strong. Why does it sound like our government giving a press talk about the coronavirus? I actually think this one might be my all-time favourite and I know it's a rogue choice. So I have just got ready for bed. I'm now in bed. I'm watching the last two films up here. The time is currently 25 to one and I am 
10 minutes into the second to last film. So this is gonna take until about 4 a.m. Maybe a bit longer, maybe 5 a.m. I haven't actually worked it out, but yeah, it's gonna be a long night. I'm actually not feeling tired. I think because I've sat and done nothing all day, I haven't even gone outside for a walk. I haven't used any energy. And I think I'm ready, you know, to like kind of do an all nighter because I have no reason to get up tomorrow. I love these films and I reckon we can hack it. Plus, the last two are my favorite, as I've already said. So we're gonna go, we're gonna see if we can manage it. Um, I don't have any coffee or any Red Bull. I probably should have. This is one of my favorite scenes. I'm so glad I haven't fallen asleep before it came on because this is probably my favorite sequence in all of the films. I am gonna be one of those people and say I kind of wish Hermione had got with Harry. I'm hanging in there, don't you see? And there's a train that goes to the kingdom. Potentially, may or may not have dozed off a tiny bit. I want to speak quietly because I know that everybody is asleep now. Look at my eyes. Oh my god. Anyway, it's quarter to three in the morning. This is one of the longest challenges, but we have done it. I always think this is such a creepy scene, like it's so, so weird. And there we go, we finished seven part one, which means only one thing. Are you ready? We're on to the last one, the final film. I honestly, I'm quite impressed. I'm not gonna have a nap. I'm not gonna do it. Here we go, this time we are watching it on Amazon because I don't have the DVD to the final one. I don't know where it is, I have it somewhere. I don't have it accessible, so I've rented this one on Amazon. Here we go, it's the last intro. How many of these have we seen? Such a, like a sad soundtrack to the final one. I think the music makes these films. I think each music is just perfect. That is a shot. So I saw this film in the cinemas when I was, I think I was 11. And I can't believe that that is coming up yeah, nine, nearly ten years. Oh my god. It's the final countdown. Doo -doo -doo. So sad. Also, this looks lush. I always used to wonder where this is. If any of you know where this is shot, I'm going to guess like Cornwall probably, but... When I say I can literally quote this entire film, I mean this entire, entire film. Me and my friend Rachel wrote out the entire script and learnt it to the whole film. <laughs> you have to laugh. This escape from Gringotts scene is so cleverly put together. I also love the ride in um, Universal for this. This is like one of my favorite, well, it probably is my favorite ride. Love this scene. Such big actors, like such huge cast in the Harry Potter films. He's going to try to kill you. Still awake, still powering through. <laughs> this film is best watched in the dark. I don't want to turn out the light because if I turn out the light, I will go to sleep. So I'm dealing with it. <laughs> so sad, so sad. Oh. I honestly could film every single clip of this film because it's so iconic. Every scene is like, so sad, so sad. There's no point in me refilming the film. I'm sure you've seen it. Such a sad scene, but so nicely shot again. Look at the Quidditch pit. Come a long way. It's been a long 19 hours. This has been a journey. Go on, Neville. I'm so ready to go to sleep now, but not yet. Arguably the best sequence in this whole series, the biggest plot twist, where it turns out that Snape has been on Harry's side the whole time and that he was in love with Lily. This sequence, if I hadn't seen it a hundred times already, would make me cry. Look at little Snape and little Lily. Oh, stop it. I think Snape's death might be the saddest. I think it takes it. I think I've decided. I mean, it seems pretty iconic, I'm not gonna lie. We're pretty much at the end. There's a little bit of fighting left to go. Bless him though. This is such a speech, this is amazing. Voldemort's mouthing is the most terrifying thing. <gasps> at this point, the crowds are like, is, is this boy even human? I may have just fallen asleep for about 20 minutes. So I've rewound it a bit, but we're pretty much at the end. Um, I am fighting a losing battle now, like, I'm so tired. This is the time. I want you to know that this is genuinely the time. I'm a five, 51. I don't, I'm not cool enough to know how you would alter that to make it a different time zone. It's 10 to five in the morning, 10 to five. I am fighting with every bit of my like consciousness to stay awake. This is such a power move by Molly Weasley. 
Not my daughter, you bitch. Love it. Also, I love Helen Bonham Carter. These are two amazing actresses. This scene was the scene that they used on the trailer before the movie came out. Here we go, it's the final battle. This is the only bit I really don't like. I don't know why they have Voldemort like disintegrate. That really didn't happen in the book. And I don't, I don't like it. I get why, like it looks better from a film point of view, but. Such a beautiful like end shot there. Was that meant to be this year? Or a few years ago, I can't remember what year, 19 years later was meant to be. I can't believe I'm still awake. I feel like I've died. Oh my gosh. <gasps> We've done it. We have only gone and done it. Eight films and they're all such long films. The actual time, oh my God. Right, well my phone is not playing ball. You can't see it, can you? What is the point of this? Well, the time it says, and it says it on here, is 5.02. It's two minutes past five in the morning. And all I'm gonna say, thank God it's locked down and I can sleep in until like after lunch. Yeah, what a way to spend a Sunday and a Monday morning apparently. I'm gonna properly celebrate when I wake up because my eyes are so heavy, so heavy. So I'm gonna go to sleep. Hey, you fell. break good times, come on. It's the next day. We survived. We lived to tell a tale. I woke up at a reasonable time still and I actually didn't feel too dead. So because I know this video is so long, I'm just going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you are bored in lockdown and you want a way to pass quite a significant amount of time, I really recommend doing this. It's quite a lot of fun. Obviously, you don't have to watch every single one. You could just watch a few or you could take on the whole 19 hour challenge and try to watch them all back to back, which let me tell you is actually a challenge. Like, I think that's quite difficult. If you've enjoyed it, give it a huge thumbs up do subscribe down below if you're new to my channel and you want to see more content like this because I do quite a lot of weird stuff this is just one of them <laughs> and this actually isn't that weird so I should be back on my channel on Thursday with another video that I'm very excited for you to see I'm filming it today and I'm so excited about it so that'll be up on Thursday bye guys thanks for watching